Thank you to the T5 peeps, Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Estrella the Dreamer, Mesic, Feudic Yol, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Mist. Thank you very much. Newcomer, written by IR, good at writing. The furry hexapod collapsed in a pit to the sound of a ringing bell. Morbin two brains let out a rapturous shout and smashed these balls together in joy. The gas cloud next to him turned into a furious red as more of its gambling credits transferred into Morbin's account. <laughs> you see, Wanderer, that's why you never get bet against the hardskins. He would have slapped the Wanderer's back if his paw wouldn't pass through its form. A part of the cloud whooshed over to Morbin's head. It was the hexapod's idiocy that got him killed, not Kral's skill. Wanderer's form changed color to violet, the color of uncertainty. Morbin swanted his paws around his ears and face until he couldn't hear Wanderer's voice in his head anymore. Ah, it's hilarious when you try and lie to yourself. What was that, Kral's fifth win? Wanderer went from violet to a light pink in annoyance. The pair looked up the screen hovering above the pit. A flat line next to the defeated fighter's name was displayed. Along with a lengthy list of physical traumas, Kral gave it during the fight. Medical bots swarmed the area around the hexapod's body. Kral stood there on the other side of the arena, laughing and cleaning off his sore arms with the manipulator arms below them. Each bot revealed a dozen different medical instruments from their forms and closed in around the hexapod. The list of injuries on the screen drained to nothing within minutes. A bot landed on the dead combatant's chest and released a burst of electricity. The fighter jumped back to life and landed on all six of its legs. The line on the screen returned to a regular heart rate and the audience cheered again. Growl mocked the defeated combatant's honor and strength to the enjoyment of the audience. He made a rude gesture to Growl and galloped out of the pit like it hadn't died moments ago. Medical bots flew away and an aquatic alien half the size of the Morbin's tail hovered at the center of the pit. A microphone was lowered into the floating fishbowl from somewhere in the ceiling. Now that was a fight to remember! The alien announced in a booming voice, and it has lasted an amazing 73 seconds. It angled its fishbowls towards Kral. That was your fifth victory in a row, and you're still in the pit. There is no shame in taking a break after a performance like that. Are you sure you want more? Kral pounded his seven-foot armored form and spat at the floating fish. I am just warming up. He clicked his mandibles in anticipation. Oh, what? The fish laughed. Let's see if you can break them up against your next opponent. The lights in the pit darkened. Only the announcer inside the fishbowl was illuminated. Honorable guests of the pit, I have a treat for you all. A new species of mammals wished to make a name for themselves in the arena. Hailing from the temperate planet Earth... Please give a warm welcome to their representative, the fierce, the terrible, the unstoppable, Bob. The crowd's cheering turned to laughter when the challenger entered the punt. A small, hairless creature jogged towards the center, wearing a blue flag with seven white interlock circles in the middle as a cape. It was a bipedal-like crowl, but only had two arms and no saws. The screen above the pit said that it was a male and an omnivore, along with some other general facts. Where's its claws? How sharp teeth? He's not even hard skin. Morbin wondered aloud. You want to give me some more money, Wanderer? Why not bet on that softie? He guffawed and slammed his paw against the railing until the Wanderer entered his head again. I'll take that bet. Two hundred credits to earn back all that I have lost. What? The glass cloud turned like green in confidence. There's a friend I'm telling you to stop while you're ahead. No, the illuminator beyond grants me luck this time. I can feel it. Wanderer left Morbin's head and became one cloud again. You said that last time. Ugh, whatever, they are credits. The dark-skinned short thing reached the middle of the arena. It revealed its white omnivorous teeth and waved to the crowd. 
Half the audience almost doubled over in laughter. Look at it! It thinks we're cheering for it! Bob and wheezed. Wanderer stayed a neutral white in contemplation. A utility bot swung down into the pit next to the challenger, folding its flag, and pulled out two shiny red pillows. Confusion swept the crowd until the thing put them on his hands and had the bot tie them in its wrists. Laughter threatened to bring down the entire arena. Even Crowl had to use the two manipulator arms to support just to keep himself from falling over in mirth. <laughs> what are you going to do? Crowl said between breaths. <laughs> put, put, put me to sleep with those things. Bob's smile faded. Yes. Crowl approached the thing in the middle and loomed over it. His black exoskeleton was covered in a colorful markings from the top of his head to his forked feet each representing a commendation earned in combat. The hairless challenger raised his gloves to his chest height and pelled them there. He looked at Krowl, expecting him to do the same with his manipulator arms. Krowl responded by swinging a sore arm towards his face. Bob ducked back with surprising speed. Krowl laughed and clicked his mandibles, each opponent circling the other, looking for weak spots. Krowl determined his longer reach would beat Bob's speed and charged in saw arms held at the ready. The edges were inches from Bob's face when he ducked out of the way again. This time, he rocketed a punch towards Krowl's abdomen. There was an audible crunch as the audience gasped. Morbin instinctively reached for Wanderer in fear and his paws met the air. Krowl screeched in pain and spun to face the challenger. Tiny fractures walked away from the clear dent that the glove had made in Krowl's armor. It's nothing! He roared to the crowd and pounded his chest with a sore arm. Bob stood hunched over on the other end of the pit, gloves raised to his face. Crowl got down into a crouch, his manipulator arm supporting his two legs. The fighters approached each other again, ducking and weaving. Bob attempted to close in for another strike to the abdomen, only to have a serrated arm slam down onto him. Red blood spilled onto the pit floor. A cry echoed throughout the arena, and it wasn't from Kral this time. Bob pulled away from his opponent. His left arm became visible to Morbin. A deep gash was cut into his fleshy forearm, penetrating deep enough to expose bone. Everyone in the crowd with lungs held their breaths, expecting the outmatched challenger to collapse any second. Bob gritted his teeth and approached Kral again. Does he not know he's injured? Morbin said. Bob towed the line between safety and striking distance, daring Crowl to strike. Growing impatient, Crowl lunged forward with both arms aimed at the challenger's neck. He ducked under the decapitating blow and swung at the dent in the armor. His glove bounced harmlessly off the opponent's chest armor. Crowl angled one of his arms mid-swing, giving Bob another slice along the back before ducking back to safety. Now that Krull was supporting himself with his manipulator arms, the dent was at too shallow of an angle for the challenger of Earth to exploit. Morbin glanced at the timer above the pits. Two minutes and thirty-six seconds. How are either of them standing, he thought to himself. You always know who the winner is in the first thirty seconds. It looked like Krull was thinking the same thing. His manipulator arms wobbled under the weight of the rest of his body, and his antennae drooped in exhaustion. The ground shook as he gave a bestial roar. With a new burst of speed, he moved towards Bob, swinging his arms left, right, up, and down. Bob dodged and ducked each strike, never quite able to reach back in return. Tiredness set in. Growl was forced to lower one sore arm to the ground to support himself. That's when the challenger made his move, dancing into striking range, the challenger pulled back his right glove for a strike, realizing the danger was in. Crowl raised his free arm to cut down his opponent. Bob's glove connected with Crowl's chin, making a crack so loud even the viewers from the highest seats could hear it. His arms, ready to strike a moment ago, fell limp to the ground. The rest of his body followed with it. Slack-jawed aliens of all races stared in silence. Bells rang after what seemed like an eternity. The sound broke everyone from their trances, and the crowd erupted in a genuine cheer. Wanderer shone a radiant blue and display of pride. Even Morbin, who lost all the credits he earned that night, 
wouldn't find it in himself to be upset. He looked up at the screen. The fight ended after 3 minutes and 12 seconds. A clear record for the pit, and probably every other pit in the galactic sector. His eyes drifted to Kral's medical status. He was alive, but his exoskeleton was broken at the jaw and abdomen. Medical bots swarmed the pit, surrounding Kral and Bob. Both their injuries were healed in less than a minute. Kral opened his eyes and rose from the ground, his usual bravado gone. He hung his head, waiting for Bob to insult his honor and make a mockery of him. Bob approached the opponent, observing his deflated form. Good fight. He tossed his glove at the bot and left the pit. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.